Hi there, this is Matt Heffernan. Welcome back to the Retro Desk. And uh, on this episode, we're going to take a look at the Commander X-16 a little closer. We're going to take this old case here, which was from a very cheap HP computer from about 2012. Had a second generation Core i3 processor in it. And we're going to try to sort of upcycle this case to uh, go from a... Uh, a somewhat obsolete computer to an extremely obsolete computer, the Commander X-16. Oh, yeah. So you can see all the dust that's in there from uh, 10 years of really not being cleaned. So yeah, we're basically gonna reuse the case and this power supply, because you can see it's an ATX type power supply. And that's all we really need for the X-16. We don't need any of these other connections, so we're just gonna pull those right out. And yeah, we'll disconnect that optical drive in there and try to get all this stuff out. Uh, we need to get rid of the expansion cards first before we can pull the old motherboard out. We got a, a couple of uh, interesting uh, vintage uh, 2012 cards in here, including a, a video card I had added onto this because the integrated Intel graphics were bad, so that gave me a, a little boost. I was able to do some basic things finally with that. And uh, another thing I was doing with this back before I was really doing YouTube a whole lot was uh, a FireWire card for doing video editing, good old uh, standard definition digital videotapes. And uh, here we go. We're going to just unscrew all the little uh, screws that are going into the case, holding the motherboard in place. And then that should just pull on out, just yank it right out by the heat sink. And ooh, there's that dusty old bird there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, served me well, but I, I don't really use this desktop anymore. And it really is just, it, it just struggles too much to try to run uh, Windows 10. And yeah, forget about getting Windows 11 on there. I, had an old Linux, uh, I think Ubuntu, uh, oh gosh, maybe a, a Ubuntu 16 <laughs> was running on there. It was pretty old and uh, cranky. But now, ah, here's going to be the very fun thing that we're going to be doing, the Commander X-16. This, of course, is one of the uh, very earliest uh, development boards for it. This is, of course, Dev 005. Uh, there's going to be about 100 of these dev units, ultimately. And there we can see that old ATX power just plugs right in. And then I've got my VGA cable uh, from this uh, old uh, 4x3 LCD monitor that I'm sticking in. Eventually, you're going to see uh, my old 21-inch CRT monitor. That's going to look real nice with this. Once we get it set up on the real retro desk and not this uh, modern Swedish desk. Of course, there's a keyboard. Oh, but wait, we're not going to peel this keyboard just yet. First, we need to get a word in from our sponsor, BCB Way. If you want to make your own dream computer like the Commander X16 or even a smaller project, whatever it is that you want to create and it requires either a PCB or some 3D printing, CNC machining, or some combination of that, if you order 10 boards, you can get them for as little as $5 a piece. And as a first-time customer to PCBWay, you'll get a $5 coupon and be able to get that very first board for free. So thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring the RetroDesk. And now let's get back to that sexy, sexy keyboard peel. Oh, yeah. That was nice. <laughs> All right, we're going to cook that up to our Commander X-16 into the little PS2 ports that are behind it. The purple one, of course, is for the keyboard. That uh, greenish one is for the mouse. And we're not going to hook up the mouse just yet. We're just going to see the keyboard in action. And that's going to get us uh, the kind of demos that we're hoping to get here for our first time booting this up. All right, let's plug in that power and we'll see whether this thing is gonna boot up. We'll hit our power button and boom, there we go. We have the boot screen. 
now it's uh, not looking quite right. There, my monitor sort of has to adjust a little bit. And there we go. It's looking good. And now let's do a little uh, Hello World type test with BASIC. We'll have it print out Hello X16. Oh, maybe I'll remember how to do some typing on a Petsky keyboard. I don't want to hit shift there or I'll get those graphical characters. But there it is. Everything's working. And uh, now I think it's time to see what came on that little SD card that was uh, already shipped with the unit. So we're going to use our CBM DOS command with dollar sign, and that shows the directory. And look, <laughs> Chase Vault is right there. So let's go right into that directory and do a DOS CD Chase Vault. And we'll take a look inside that directory, make sure. It's uh, not changed from the way I made it. And yep, so chasvault.prg is the uh, binary that's executable. So we will load that into RAM and then run it. And while it runs, we'll see here in the actual real time, loading all those assets into RAM from the SD card. And there it is, the title screen for the first time on my very own Commander X16. All right, so we'll, we'll play this a little bit, and yeah, it looks exactly how I had hoped it would look. Of course, I had seen other folks play this on uh, hardware, but only on video, never live in person. So that was really cool. All right, you can see the little uh, propeller, <laughs> the little fan in the PSU just spins down a bit. It doesn't get up too fast there, but right now we want to just unplug all this cabling and we'll uh, put the Commander X16 aside and we'll get into this case and uh, get it ready for putting the uh, board in. So we, yeah, we need to get that little plate out. We uh, don't want to have anything obstructing us. And we gotta get this mess of cables out of the way and try to jam this thing in there. It is a full-size uh, ATX board, and this is a mini tower, and oh, it's just not quite enough space to get in there with that uh, exhaust fan. So uh, we don't really need that exhaust fan. We are not going to be running nearly hot enough to require that sort of cooling. Uh, the, the cooling of the PSU itself is going to be fine. That's the only thing that's really going to get warm on the X16. So we can just get rid of this crusty old fan and oh let's take a look at how crusty oh my goodness so crusty <laughs> okay let's get that big spaghetti mess out of the way all right we'll get that board nicely positioned we'll get the io ports uh, in that little window and the slots will be all lined up and as a standard ATX board, it has the expected screw mounts. So we can just screw it uh, right into the motherboard in those uh, pre-drilled holes that we had the old motherboard in. So makes that nice and convenient. So pretty much any uh, ATX type case and power supply, if it has that type of uh, connector, you're able to get the X16 up and running. So you don't have to buy anything custom. Just nice off the shelf and if you have an old case that you're not using it's really a, a, a perfect application here to take a computer that you're not going to use anymore and uh, turn it into something a little more fun a little more uh, retro even though it looks <laughs> like at least for now a monstrosity from 2012 the, the cheapest desktop computer I could buy at Staples at the time so here we can see it's uh, nicely positioned in there we got all the expansion slots lined up so once we do get an expansion board those should fit in quite nicely the case is deep enough you can see how far back that motherboard is set that uh, you can get a, a pretty tall expansion card or a cartridge to fit in there no problem even if the case was fully closed so we're gonna get the PSU plugged back in and start it up and uh oh <laughs> the fan didn't want to go too long and yeah I think we know why that's happening uh, I've seen this before in videos 
of uh, other people, notably Dave Murray, the 8-bit guy who uh, invented this computer. He, uh, he's found that uh, sometimes if you're not careful, you can end up shorting some of the pins on the back of the PCB. Of course, the peril of having all these old school through hole components is all those sticky outy bits on the bottom are all metal, and that's no good. So, this little uh, foam sheet that came with it that was uh, shipped in, I was putting that on the desk before to keep the desk from getting scratched, and I can also use that as an insulator, so that's what I'll do. But uh, what, what I'd recommend again, because like I said, there's so much space in a, a standard case that you, you can put some uh, pretty tall offsets in there and, and that'll keep all of those contacts from getting shorted if you have a, an interior a steel case like this so now we're just going to make sure with a little smoke test before we screw it back in there that we haven't messed anything up and uh <laughs> yeah don't try this at home this is kind of a a janky uh situation here for the x16 but we'll plug the PSU back in and try to power it up. And yep, everything looks good. So, uh, of course, you have to try Chase Vault one more time. Make sure everything is working as expected. And then I take my trusty awl and I just do a little poking through each of those holes. And that should give me enough purchase on those uh little uh, screw holes at, on the side of the case to get the board screwed back in there so that only those uh, screws are, are making contact and none of those pins that are sticking out the back. Those should all be nicely isolated by that foam. All right, get those screws back in and plug all these cables back in. And I also thought I'd be smart by uh, just taking the old optical drive out. Of course, I gotta take that front fascia off first and just pop this guy out. And oh yeah, we'll have a good look at <laughs> the old optical drives, another thing we don't really use anymore. And that gave me enough slack just barely to get the uh, power switch cable over to the power switch header on the board. And we'll see uh, if the power switch that came with this case works. But first, we gotta get, get the fascia back on so we can actually hit that button again. And then we will uh, get some uh, power uh, back into the PSU and see if uh, this will work. And as you can see, as soon as I plug the power into the PSU, it turns right on. And uh, that's because the wiring for the uh, power switch yeah it's it's not right it's not what the board is looking for so uh, i'm gonna have to come up with a different switch eventually i want to have this case be able to have the uh, power and reset buttons at the very least routed uh, externally and be able to activate those without having to have the case open all the time might have a nice glass top case or <laughs> something but hey there we go uh, just going to use the switches with the case open for now and set the tower back up and our X16 is ready to go with the exception of our keyboard. It's still sort of plain Jane. So we're going to take those uh, stickers that uh, Kevin Williams from Texelec sent me and get this nice and customized for the Commander X16. There we go. Nice logo up there in the corner. We gotta get rid of the Windows key. Don't like the Windows key. That's gonna be now a uh, Commander key. And we'll get the nice Commander X16 butterfly logo on there. Nice. No more uh, evidence of being Windows. And we'll just cover up the keys that are different. Uh, a lot of the keys aren't any different at all. There's no special use for the uh, Commander X16 or any sort of Commodore 8 bit computer. So I I'm not going to bother with the stickers on there. I don't really like the feel of the stickers. It's They're kind of awkward to type on. So uh, eventually I will have one of the proper custom keyboards for the Commander X16, either the version of this Perix keyboard 
that has the printed keycaps or the uh, deluxe uh, WASD keyboard that is uh, a fully mechanical keyboard, Cherry MX switches that I can uh, select exactly which kind of switch I want and have the nice full stroke keys with these printings on them. So that should look real nice and there we go for now. I can at least know where things are going. So let's, let's pull that SD card and now we'll pop it back in, load it up with a program that I had on my other computer. And now we'll see in there is Patreon up here. Gee, you've seen me load it many times because these are the folks that help make the Retro Desk possible. Our patrons, uh, thanks to each and every one of you for everything you do. And uh, it's because of you that now you get to see your names up on a real Commander X-16. So uh, thanks again. And if you're uh, not a patron, go over to Patreon and you can sign up and get to these videos ad-free before they come out. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Subscribing is uh, free. And you can just click that bell to be notified when new uh, videos come out. And we'll have a good time. We'll see some more awesome things here at the Retrodesk. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.